I think the issues of downtown Steubenville, and it could very well be in most uh, downtowns today, is that uh, businesses have moved from the downtown location to malls and strip malls throughout the country and have left downtown quite vacant. And as a result of that vacancy, uh, you have an element of, uh, of uh, fear of coming into a place that has empty buildings throughout its streets. And the cleanliness also is a factor where uh, it's not kept up as well as it had been in the past when you had a multitude of stores here. So I think the, the fear factor of safety, the cleanliness, uh, are two uh, vital parts of why people don't come downtown. And then also, you have to understand that there's not much down here for them to come down to. Back in the 50s when I was in school, uh, downtown uh, was the, uh, the place uh, to be. It was, uh, a, we had a central store called The Hub, and appropriately it was called The Hub because it drew from a, a radius of about, uh, I would say, 25 miles uh, from all around people would come to Steubenville. We, uh, we had department stores that no other city in the area had. And so the streets on Saturday and Thursday nights or Monday nights when we were open late, they were just literally packed. The, it was a hustle bustle. We, uh, when I, again, back in the day in high school, we would hang out on the corner of Fourth and Market because as the old saying goes from a song back in the uh, 60s, that's where the girls are, or that's where the boys are. Well, that's where the girls were, were downtown. So <laughs> guys would hang out along the streets just to watch the girls go by. It was that uh, kind of an atmosphere. And again, the factor of safety was paramount. People were had no fear of walking anywhere or being anywhere. Your cars were unlocked. I remember coming uptown, I would park down by St. Peter's Church, which is a d decent distance because you couldn't find a place to park. So you walked a decent distance to come to downtown Steubenville. And uh, there were a multitude of restaurants, a multitude of bars that were here. All of them thrived, no matter what, how small or how large they all, they all worked. Uh, I know in, in two blocks there were eight furniture stores. You just can imagine, two blocks, how can eight furniture stores survive? But it, they did. Uh, today we have, uh, we're the only furniture store left in downtown Steubenville. So it, it, it was a time that was just special. Uh, you would hear music uh, coming out of the upper floors of downtown because there were a multitude of ballrooms. Uh, the, uh, we had a, our store used to be down the street here a couple of uh, doors, and there was a f called the Florentine Ballroom up there. And the windows were open and the bands were playing, so the music spilled out onto the streets. The Harmonium Project is an urban revitalization project aimed to revitalize Steubenville through cultural and economic means. Uh, at the cultural level, uh, we're seeking to do it through, through music, through concerts in the downtown area, uh, and also through an after-school music program for kids to give them a safe place off the streets. Uh, so that they can have a creative way to express themselves. And we're promoting economic growth uh, by promoting local businesses so that we can integrate the students of Franciscan University uh, with the town they live in. Hey Matt, 
So how's life as a Franciscan University student? Well, classes are great. That's great. Did you know that Plain Janes are offering a 20% student discount? <laughs> 20%? Plain Jane's is a family-owned restaurant. We've been here for about five years. It's originally named after my mother, who said she was a Plain Jane, but she has never really worked. I really believe that everybody would enjoy all of our menu items, but the Jane Burger is a huge Big Mac on steroids. I mean, if you could finish one of those, and it's still under $5, so it's, and it's delicious. I'll, I'll cook to order. If you want juicy burgers, wingding sandwiches, and fries, Come on down to Plain Jane's, you won't believe your eyes. Saturday night's got dollar beers and people singing tunes. So come on down and bring your friends and grab yourself some food at Plain Jane's. They have free Wi-Fi. I'm a student at Franciscan University of Steubenville in Ohio. I've been here for just over three years. Um, and I, current, I live off campus. Uh, I live in the... LaBelle section of the city, um, which is known for for poverty, is known for uh, some of the crime which does plague that part of the city. Um, so I have my foot in kind of both of these worlds. I'm Genevieve and I'm a student at Franciscan University. About three years ago I led a group of students to have an opportunity to have them serve the people and get to know the city a little better. Um, and I was absolutely amazed that the students knew nothing about the city and knew nothing about the streets and the shops and the landmarks and the murals. And we had to have a whole day dedicated to a scavenger hunt around the city in order to become familiar with it. My name is Emilio Marquez. I'm the volunteer coordinator of the Harmonium Project. Before I was a part of the the project. Um, I, I have to admit, I was I was rather skeptical, you know, to hear these these uh, university students trying to revitalize downtown Steubenville that's been in depression for almost thirty years now. Um, and to hear that they had a building that they wanted to fix up was, you know, was better. Uh, that was that was pretty cool. But but until I saw the building, um, until then, I, I hadn't fallen in love. But right right when I stepped in and and just saw the first, you know, the, the the staircase were going up and in that first hallway I, I was sold right then I, I found out about the harmonium project through a friend of mine um, they told me what the founders were doing what their idea was what their their general goal was I, I loved it I've definitely been uh, hoping for that for a long time we, we definitely need that in the city and so I, I wanted to lend a helping hand do what I could for the city um, so the first first week of, of school I went down and volunteered some time at the Harmonium Project. I did what I could, which was just you know scraping walls, things like this. And I came as often as, as I could, uh, several times a week. And um, really, the, the founders just saw in me uh, a love for the, the city, a love for what their goal was. And so they asked me to, to come on because they knew that, that my heart was exactly where they needed it to be. And so they asked me to take on a, a little bit larger role in the, in the project itself. The location that we were able to acquire is, is really of prime location as well as the, the building itself is it facilitates perfectly for for the goal and the mission of, of this project um, where it's located is is right in the middle of the downtown um, the the very it's three floors the first one on the street level has uh, two business fronts these business fronts we already have a, a business owner who who's uh, come up to us and wants to, to put in two different businesses, a coffee shop and a bakery. On the second floor, we have large rooms that, that are perfect for the, uh, the classrooms for our, our music um, lessons. And then on the third floor, we have a beautiful ballroom. And in this ballroom, it not only does it have great acoustics, but it has a perfect atmosphere to have just a, a nice concert or whatever event that we're going to be putting on as the Harmonium Project. The renovation process really sort of began with um, uh, moments of despair. Uh, we walked into the building, uh, there were entire portions of the walls and ceiling missing uh, in the ballroom. Um, there was you know, dirty carpet, there was um, so much in there that just needed to be cleaned up. It was a building that was in, very much in disrepair. So we took the building and um, we began going about finding people who kind of understood 
more of what needed to be done. Um, we happened across a, a man who was out of work, who was a contractor, uh, who was able to advise us and help us in, um, or pointing us in the right way to what needed to be done, you know, putting up new drywall or painting, what kind of paint to use, how to uh, strip a floor and, and refinish it. So the Harmonium Project, even before it had gotten to full swing, uh, had already accomplished its goal by students participating with locals and by promoting uh, an economic development. And we created one job. And in that respect, we've done exactly what we set out to do. Our, our work in the, in the ballroom, I think, was, was the hardest for us because we, we had a deadline because we had the Audrey Assad concert coming up and, and we were going to have her playing, playing a show in there. Um, but also it required the most work from us. In, in one of the walls in, in the ballroom, um, a good, a substantial amount of the, the plaster was missing and, and as well as some of the boards behind it. Um, so, so we had to get up on the ladders. I mean, you know, you're 16, almost 20 feet up in the air uh, and, and trying to replaster this thing, you know, and, and all the while you're, you're really learning as you go. Um, uh, you know, I've, I've had some, um, some, some work in that plaster work, but, but obviously I haven't, I haven't been trained professionally or anything like this. So, so you're just kind of learning as you go and, and, and you're just hoping that, you know, it does work out all right and everything. And, and it's just, you know, it, it takes a lot of effort, you know, a lot of people's help as well to, to finish, you know, this, this large, um, project that needs to be done. Uh, my name is Brianna Maggio. I am a senior at Franciscan University. The students have been really, uh, really energetic about the whole project. Um, they've gone down there to help with service projects, to help fix up the building. They've just gone with the general mission of the Harmonium Project to support the downtown businesses. Um, they've really been outgoing in wanting to help and make, make the world a better place just starting in our town. Uh, it's funny to, to be able to see the, the wide-ranging um, ability of volunteers who, who came and, and helped us. You know, some people, you know, seem to be able to, to do just about anything that you ask them to, and then some. And then other people, you, you literally would put a brush in their hand and they'd ask you, what do I do with it, you know? Um, but, but somehow we were able to, to get everybody together. And, and you know, it, it was great, even if those people who... Who were sitting there, you know, they did a little teeny area, painted a you know square foot area. You know, it's like, hey, at least they came down, and at least they they were able to participate in the Harmonium project, and at least they were able to say, hey, I you know I care enough to spend some time down there. During my time uh, working with the Harmonium project, it's been really quite beautiful to see the the fruits of it already, as as our labor has just barely begun. Um, just the the fact of how how many people have come up to us, volunteered their time from the school, but also from the community at large. Uh, it's been a great witness in that people want this, and they also are excited that that this project itself has potential, you know. And and that I think that gives me a lot of inspiration to continue to work in this project because it's not just simply my own hopes and dreams and and my own thoughts that this is a good thing, but, but other people realizing that within the Harmonium Project itself, there is much, much potential. And you were beautiful once Before skies fill the gray So beautiful once and the fallen words you'd give away. Well, I first heard the idea that the arts are central to the development of an area uh, by growing up in Texas. Uh, in Texas, uh, the, there's the live music capital of the world uh, in Austin, Texas. Uh, and we can see that there is so much, so much happening there. Um, there's musicians coming by every day that and the people of that city really thrive on the culture that that's brought about. I did see that as a kid going to 
uh, going to Austin, going to these these concert halls, going to these restaurants that that had music. Um, later in life, when they started the South by Southwest Music Festival, uh, and just seeing how much how much that would bring into the town, uh, creatively, economically, and how much it really thrives on that. Uh, so I would say that the arts uh, do play a central role uh, in the economics of of a city. So there, there used to be this bridge between Pittsburgh and Steubenville. Um, uh, as maybe some of you know, maybe you don't know, Dean Martin used to actually be from Steubenville. Um, he, he, uh, he came to this area quite a bit. And we still have uh, Dean Martin festivals in Steubenville every year. It's just, just a cool thing to hear about that this town used to be something. Because you come here now and, and it's tough to tell. But... Um, Something they used to have in Pittsburgh was the Blue Laws. So like, you could you could drink and have fun at a place on uh, on Friday and Saturday nights, and then when Sunday rolled around, nobody could sell alcohol. Nobody could really uh, really you know go to a place and just just kind of have a night in the town like uh, like you know, like they could in Steubenville um, because Steubenville is in Ohio, so they didn't have the Blue Laws. So everybody would would uh, schedule their shows in Pittsburgh. Have a, have a Friday, Saturday night, and then they'd be like, "Okay, let's go over to Steubenville after that. Let, let's keep this party going," you know. And uh, and that's what was great about it um, back then. And that's kind of what we want to create again. Um, just this um, this sense of home, you know, uh, a place where people can be, they can be happy, they can be with friends. Um, yeah, just a, a place where they can feel comfortable, listen to music. Um, yeah. My name is Patrick Walters. I am the project director um, for the Harmonium Project. Well, um, being the project director of the Harmonium Project, it's, it's kind of funny actually. Um, this is not something that I will continue to be doing after this semester. Um, I'm only the project director for uh, one semester since Mark Barnes is away in, um, in Austria. I'm waiting for him to return. <laughs> um, we've, uh, we all kind of miss him because um, one of his his role really was to just kind of get everybody going, get everybody moving. Um, he'd make contacts that we need to have, um, send the emails. He'd contact um, just um, like lawyers, different things like that, so so we could be more official. Um, talk to the people in the town, see what they need, um, get everything going with the building, um, and kind of delegate. He did a, he did a lot of delegating, and um, that's really what I'm doing this semester. Uh, before that, I was doing more public relations work. Um, just, uh, just contacting, finding bands, also uh, being kind of a face on campus. Um, I know a lot of people, so they're like, hey, what's up? You want to come to our show or something? Um, and and just finding students as well um, to play for us. Like um, something that's great is a lot of students here. Um, a lot of them play instruments. A lot of them have their own original music. So what's beautiful about that is they have a lot of friends as well so we can say hey can you can you open for this band that's coming and uh and they could come around um come down to the show uh open but also bring a group of their friends and in that way uh really love love the city of steubenville and that's kind of our mission um we've been we've been saying a lot of uh hashtag love love our city after like every post just to make sure that people know like that's our goal to take this city into to love it into existence, I guess. It's been great. We've had we've had a number of people play. We've had Audrey Assad has played. Um, we've had the Kashchik Brothers. Um, we've also had um, band, a guy named Sam Rocha come play. Mike Mangione. Um, and we're looking into bigger bands now. Um, we just realize, thanks to so many people's support, um, just by their donations, we we have we're able to budget um, for bigger bands to come in here. Um, and that's part of our mission too, just to get bands from Pittsburgh to come out here, um, and and to have them to have them create a bridge between Pittsburgh and here, like there used to be. So during the second half of summer 2013, myself and Mark Barnes, we were in a class on the philosophy of Carol Wojtyla, and we were also reading uh, Catholic social teaching. And the central theme that kept arising is the necessity to act, the necessity to not only think about and talk about the issues that surround uh, our communities, surround us as people, but also uh, to do something about that. So 
there were nights where we would stay up until five or six in the morning talking about this philosophy. And then we finally decided, what should we do? We have to do something uh, because we understand that there has to be more than just the words that we're saying. We began um, walking around downtown, getting to know the businesses, eating at the, all the local restaurants. And, and then finally we saw a building. We decided, you know what, that's going to be our building. Uh, we went about uh, getting a hold of the landlord, renting out the building, renovating the building. And from there, it's just grown into what it is today. Over the course of the last few years, uh, we've seen this sort of sweeping realization throughout the world of the necessity to change. Um, people are sick and tired of not having work. People are tired of not being able to feed their families, are, are tired of the situations uh, in which they are a part. And often the, this realization uh, is paired with a second realization that they're not in complete control of their lives. There's a desire to really overcome the situation and figure out a new way to move forward uh, into the future. And this often takes place by, uh, has often uh, over the course of the last few years, to uh, the necessity to change what's happening with the governments of which they're a part. Uh, we've seen this happen in, in, uh, in the Middle East. We've seen this happen in the Ukraine. Uh, it's happening uh, today in uh, Venezuela. It's happening all over the world, this desire to really overcome these situations by really facing their governments and facing the people uh, who need to be held responsible for so much. Uh, with the Harmonium Project, uh, of course our problems are, are, are less, but what we're trying to accomplish is simultaneously the same thing. We want to promote job growth, we want to promote economic growth, we want to promote a real forward thinking and a real forward moving change in our community. Uh, and this can't happen without the complete support of uh, the city government with even the county government, the state government, that with, if we're not able to move forward with something which is aimed at doing exactly uh, what the people really want, um, there's not going to be any real progress. Um, so with us, um, our problems have been primarily bureaucratic problems, um, finding out where to do paperwork, uh, finding the people to give that paperwork to. Um, these have been the problems that plagued us. At the end of the fall semester of 2013, uh, we had pretty much done uh, all of the renovations in the ballroom of our building. So we began looking out to say, okay, now what needs to be done? Um, and then we finally realized that we have to involve ourselves with, with the city government. Um, so we began seeking out uh, building permits. We began seeking out uh, the fire marshals um, to come inspect the building, all these things. And we, we just weren't aware of uh, the troubles that we would face in just trying to contact people. Uh, messages would get lost uh, or just not returned. Um, uh, this has been especially uh, prevalent with the city planning office. In getting, in getting the building inspected and up to code and making sure that everything that we do is fully in line with the law, um, just getting that process accomplished has, uh, has halted so much of what we're uh, trying to accomplish with the Harmonium Project. But that's not to say that the city has done nothing for us. Uh, quite a few people on city council have come to us and told us how how much they, they love what we're doing and how supportive they are. Uh, we've also heard from the Jefferson County Port Authority, uh, who really wants to help us as much as they can. Um, but we, the bureaucracy that we do come in contact with, it's, it's not even the people that 
we're struggling with. It's the system in which we're a part, uh, in, in the system which uh, has brought about the, this, this awful bureaucratic mess that plagues so many people. There's, there's been several business owners who, have, who are within the downtown area, but also Steubenville at large, that have come to us and have, have lent either a helping hand or maybe they've donated money, or even it's just their support within the community, which has been huge, you know, connecting with us with other people, um, even just talking with us and, and, you know, coming to our events, things like this have, have been just at the very least to, to keep our spirits high and, and to continue working um, hard on this project. And, and constantly telling us how, how much even just our presence itself has, has helped to give them a lot of hope about their city, a lot of hope of that, that it, for a long time, for, for almost 30 years, has, has really been gone. Um, this, uh, this, this inspiration, if you will, has, has been really the driving force for all of us on the, at the Harmonium Project to know that, that we aren't just in a vacuum, that we're not just here you know, doing good things in our own hearts and our own thoughts, but but in reality, we are touching other people's lives, and in reality, we are touching the community. And with that touch, we actually are are in, you know, communicating a love of that that is that is making a change within the community for a good. Some of the things which have been uh, overwhelmingly exciting with this process uh, has been the contacts that we've made uh, uh, in the music realm. Very early on, we were able to uh, get a hold of Audrey Assad, uh, who was very willing to uh, come out, put on a, a show for much cheaper than she typically charged. Audrey Assad is a, um, for lack of a better term, a Christian music artist, um, who herself is trying to overcome this idea that uh, that Christian art should be separated from regular art. Um, which is pretty very much something that we're trying to express to our very Catholic community that good art is good art um, So she's been very much involved in what we're doing um, and being one of the more popular uh, female Christian musicians uh, And a Catholic musician at that she has a huge following here at Franciscan and her pretty much unyielding support up to up to this point um, has been uh, a huge blessing. We don't per se um, consider ourselves a Christian organization. We're mainly focusing on the arts and on, um, on revitalization, how we can best do that. We do want to um, live according to like Catholic social teaching um, and, and look at the guidelines they have there in, in the compendium for the Catholic Church for the uh, for the social teaching of the Catholic Church, but we're not outright like, hey, we're Catholic, because I think one of the biggest things, well, I know, um, it's been tough for the city sometimes because people from, students from this campus will go downtown, and they'll pray and minister to people, but they'll forget to talk to them, um, ask them how their day was, um, ask them about stories from the past, you know, um, who they are, um, and, I think that's hard for people sometimes um, because I think people do want to be prayed with, but they also they also want to be known, um, and that's what we want to do is uh, is is know people. Thirty six in Broadway, coffee on my airplane, spending twenty years pay with you. We chose the name The Harmonium Project because at the time, many of the members of the core team were reading the philosophy of Heraclitus. And Heraclitus had an idea that all things are uh, in harmony with each other. Discordant things coming together to create something beautiful. So we took the name uh, or the word harmonia from Heraclitus and used a more of a Latin root harmonium um, to express what we were trying to do by integrating uh, cultural and economic growth and the integration of the Franciscan University student population with the population of Steubenville, Ohio. So when we started the Harmonium Project, um, we didn't want it to be this thing that would just kind of start up, exist for a few years while we're all in school, and then 
just fizzle out and die away. We want it to be something that's going to promote economic growth. We want it to be something that's going to promote cultural growth. We want the music that comes into this city um, to be amazing. And we want the, the culture to really change. We want it to last forever. Uh, we don't want the Harmonium Project just to be something that happens here. We want it to branch out, to go to these other cities, uh, no matter how large. Because uh, if they're in need of, of a change, we want to help be that change. I'm, I'm a very firm believer in um, not only the, the need and, and the, the hope for, for a change in this nation and, and in all communities, um, but all, you know, just the very real possibility of it, the very real potential of it um, through the individual. It's not so much that all that we've done, you know, we haven't like, you know, brought back all these businesses to the community and, and everybody's, you know, rolling in dough, you know, it's, it's not something like this. It's more like, you know, showing that we want, we care and we're willing to, you know, put our, put our sweat and blood and tears into something that is, is bigger than us and, and that inspires people and that, that brings hope to people and, and that in turn, you know, it, it always replicates, it always breeds more and more and more. And, and so like this, this participation in something grander than ourselves, it not only does it, does it affect outside of ourselves, but it affects within ourselves as well. So, so we transform ourselves by transforming those outside of us. Um, I think one of the lessons we can take from the Harmonium Project is that it was just, it was an idea stemmed forth from just an ordinary conversation from two guys into something much bigger than that. Um, it's something that you can do anywhere. It's not just Steubenville, it's not just this area in Ohio, but it, it, you can take this and bring it anywhere. I think the interesting thing about the Harmonium Project is when we started it, um, we were all students. And the funny thing is, we still are. Um, you know, we're not, we're not done. We've got so much work to do. I mean, I've, I know a bunch of us are planning on sticking around, you know, and not because we're like, oh, I'm scared of the world. I want to stay, you know, comfortable with, with the school that I'm in. But uh, I think we all feel that there's a way in which we can give. Um, there's a way in which that we can help something flower, something, you know, grow. There's so much that keeps happening with the Harmonium Project. Um, so many things keep being handed to us. People keep writing to us and saying like, hey, do you, let's do this. And sometimes we're not even at that point. We're like, oh, dang, like, we, yeah, we'd love to have your grant written, but we're not there, we're not even there yet, um, which is great. It gives us hope for the future. And then um, also there's just moments where things just get tough. Like, um, you know, we have obstacles like anybody else. Um, but the beautiful thing is, is they've only uh, made us stronger and brought us more together and more focused on our mission. Um, so yeah, uh, all I'd really say to, to end in talking about something that's continuing is that we're hopeful, very hopeful. You guys can be the spark for downtown Steubenville. You guys, with your enthusiasm and the drive to work and to make it happen, it will happen. And you can make it a success as long as you got it in your heart to do that. And that's how anything and everything is done that is good. You have to have that inspiration, the, uh, the, the ability to uh, get things done and not give up. We're starved for entertainment, quality entertainment. Um, we need it desperately here. Other cities have done it. Why can't we do it? We should be doing it. Uh, thank God the university is here because it does have an, it is a great uplifting for Steubenville. That's, we hang our hat on the university because when the mills collapsed, uh, the only thing that really is bringing people in here in numbers is Franciscan University. And they're coming from everywhere. We need to take advantage of that. We need to, we need to capitalize on it. The, 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 the ingredients is there. We just have to put it together and make the pie. And you guys that are, have this vision of downtown, this is the first time in my life that I have seen this, this enthusiasm and this desire to do something in downtown. And I applaud you immensely because that's exactly what we need.